Hey guys, welcome to the solution of problem 14, take two. Uh, it was pointed out to me that in the first solution I posted, I'd made an assumption that wasn't actually indicated by the diagram. Um, and so I wanted to take the opportunity to, to firstly to rectify that uh, and provide a solution that works in general. Uh, but secondly, to sort of talk about making mistakes in math um, and the sort of the process of math and how you learn it, how you get better at it. So I'll start by telling you what the assumption was that I made. Um, so the setup we had, we had this sort of bigger outer square um, and we cut out a smaller square by drawing these lines at 45 degrees um, and these lines are sort of offset by the, um, from the side by, by five units on, it, on each corner. Uh, and so the question is what's the area of that, that central square? So the assumption that I made in the first solution was that these intersection points of these lines sort of lined up perfectly with where that five, that mark was, um, which is not the case. And you can even see in this drawing here, they don't line up very nicely. And so that's, I think, the first lesson to, to be learnt here, um, one which I should have known better, is, and that is that often in maths, um, the diagrams aren't drawn sort of exactly to scale. And so it's easy to make um, assumptions based on the way you've drawn a picture that, that aren't actually part of the question. Right, so there's actually nothing, there's no information in this diagram um, that tells me that these two points should be directly above each other. All right, so you can draw it in, in one particular case, they do line up nicely, um, but in most other cases, they won't actually line up nicely. And so that, that's one thing to be very careful of, that if you're looking at a drawing, that you don't sort of make assumptions about what's happening just because of the way it's drawn. Okay, in math, there has to be, there has to be something telling you exactly that those points line up or has to be some reason that you can deduce that they should line up for you to use that information. Uh, luckily in this, in this instance it doesn't actually change the answer uh, but I will give you a solution that, that deals with the full generality of the question um, rather than the one specific case that I was looking at. The second thing I wanted to say about this is that um, when you make mistakes like this in math it's usually, it's a, I mean, the first thing you kind of feel is like a little bit of embarrassment, right? Like, you know, I mean, I feel a bit silly that I kind of messed up something, especially in, in such a simple question. Um, but it's good. You, you, you got to get over that. If you want to get better at maths, there's going to be lots of times where you feel silly, where you, where you say something or you make some assumption or you think something works a certain way and it doesn't. Um, you got to get used to that. At some point, there's gonna, that's going to happen to you. Um, and, and when someone points it out to you and says, hey, like, I don't think this, you know, you, I think you made some assumption here, or I don't think this actually works the way you think it does. Um, they're some of the, the best lessons that you'll learn. Uh, it's sometimes it can really change the way you look at something. You, start, you realize that you've, you've held this view about something or you, you thought something worked a certain way um, and it doesn't, or you thought it worked a certain way for some reason, which wasn't actually the reason that it worked that way. But realizing those kind of things will, will actually give you a deeper understanding of what's going on. Um, it will help you with your intuition. So later on, when you're trying to think about how something should work or, or why you think something might work a certain way, uh, you'll have a better idea of, of what should be going on uh, because, of, because you now know how those things really work. Anyway, thanks, thanks to Scott for pointing out the, the flaw in my argument. Um, hopefully this is a correct solution. Okay, so the key to this, this question, at least in my eyes, is still um, using this nice 45 degree right angle triangle, this isosceles triangle. Okay, so if we have a right angle triangle with a 45 degree angle here, we know the other angle has to be 45 degrees, so that they all add up to 180 degrees, um, which forces it to be an isosceles triangle, uh, which means all of them are similar to this um, right angle triangle here. Okay, in particular, the two short sides are the same length. Okay, so we're gonna use that up here. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a new variable, um, which is A, I'm gonna call A, to be this sort of the other length that makes up the edge of the square. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna extend this line out till it hits the edge of the, the big square. So now we get our isosceles right angle triangle here. Um, and since we've called this side length A, um, this must also be A. 
okay, this other side of the triangle has to be the same length. Okay, and now since we know that the total length of this side is a plus 5, um, that must mean that this other leftover bit here must also be 5. And so that means that if we now connect these dots, these points here, um, we get another right angle triangle and both these sides the same length. So this is actually also 45 degrees, okay, which means that this line we've drawn here, this dashed line in green, um, is parallel to the edge of the, the small square. Um, and it must be the same length because it's going between the same two lines. Okay, and so now it's clear, using Pythagoras, or knowing that, um, that this triangle has to be similar to this one, um, this length here has to be 5 times the square root of 2. Okay. Um, and we can play the same game on one of these other edges to show that this distance between these other two lines We can show, do the same thing over here, show that this side length here is also 5 times the square root of 2, so that that is indeed a square, um, and then the area of that square is going to be this thing squared, um, which is 50. So that might be somewhat surprising, so what we've actually shown is that sort of no matter what this length a is, um, as long as you still get an interior square, um, but you can adjust that however you like, that little square in the middle is still going to be, uh, have an area of 50.